I'll never forget the first time my girlfriend reached down my pants and saw my Micro Four Thirds size sensor for the first time and she giggled at me. It doesn't mean that you can't get good results from your tiny equipment. Today we discover if putting Olympus's best lens, the 300 mm 24 Prime, that's supposed to compete with the professional wildlife systems, does doing that make this good? All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. Every time I take the Olympus out with the 75 to 300, I try to get some wildlife shots. I come back with some decent stuff. I get a bunch of you in the comments. You should have used a better lens. That lens, if you would have used this lens, it's not fair. You're comparing the 75 to 300 to Sony. Oh my, what are you doing here? It costs so much more money. This is your lens. We have it now. Are the results different? Hmm, kind of, barely. I'll be honest with you, I captured things with this setup yesterday that I've never got before. Just, you got lucky, Olympus, for the magic that we're about to witness. But if I had been on any other system, it might have looked nicer. All right, let's get build quality out of the way. When you first touch this lens, you're blown away by the quality. Every little attention to detail, even the buttons, these little clicky freaks, they feel better than most buttons click there's something about it like they put thought in the manual focus clutch feels so smooth everything here very smooth and very short throw it's kind of really nice because i can be in full manual mode see something and i know okay yeah, yeah and i'm there like it's very quick and good except it's too ass sensitive it's just way too much. Like one little notch and you jump. It's actually quite irritating and it's not a smooth. There's no way this clutch is doing manually. It's doing it still electronically, I believe. Cause you, it jumps, it, go, doo, 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 it steps. This lens hood is a unique design. It unlocks, pulls out, locks. Interesting, and then it just goes back. It never locks again though. It will never lock here, ever. Last thing about the build quality, tripod foot not comfortable at all to carry like this. Your fingers barely fit in between there. Olympus, your tiny fingers are so revealing to what's in your pants. So first impressions, here's a little side by side, 4K 24P. HD 120p. It's quite different and this I find is Olympus's biggest downside, their codex. It's just their 120 frames per second and the 240 in the OM1. It's just not meant to be witnessed. It's not good. I don't know, they cheeked out so hard on it because they're a photography system. I'm so tired of reviewing photography cameras for video. But the video cameras aren't doing anything. There's no like normal full frame camcorders or even micro four thirds that's reasonable and good that's keeping up with today's technology. So it's a painful business that I live in every day. But to tell you, it's sharp. I wasn't super impressed with the stabe, if I'm being honest with you. This is sick stabe here. This, I'm like kind of kneeling. Admittedly, it's my fault. Here I'm standing. But still, like, you can see the jerky motions. I'm trying. It's user error for sure. But, like, I get smooth footage on the Fuji. No problem. And Sony, Sony's a little different. Like, it sways more up and down slowly. And it's like, it's not terrible. But the Olympus has some jerks. And if that's the best they can do, sync stabe. I don't know, like, everything sucks at 24p. Don't ever use it. I myself like to shoot in slow-mo at least 60p, 120p okay, preferably 240. And I find that, yeah, it might look a little better than my kit lens looked, the 75 to 300, but it still looks very much the same. So all the past and prior comparisons that I've done with the little 75 to 300 versus the Fuji or the Sony, it's a still valid complaint if you're doing 120p. I'm just giving you my honest opinion. I'm not blown away by the increase in quality over that little zoom lens. 
it is better it is sharper you do get more background blur the background blur is smoother like everything about the image is slightly better but it's not like worlds different and thank you camera canada for lending this to us they saw me complain in a video i was like i want to review all this stuff i want a gh6 with a like a 200 mil to review but they don't have it they only have open box stuff and then he said like one's on the way I don't know if they made some, they just stole it from Aiden camera. I, they might have, and that's fine. That's fine. So thank you so much for lending this to me. I will take good care. Oh, that had to be out of the shot for that to work. You can't just do it again. Now here's a sequence that highlights a very important issue that I have filming on Olympus cameras for video. So I'm manually focusing this. I'm having some success at some times. This is a little creep bug bird that likes to steal spiders from their homes at night. See that? See what just happened there? I jumped so far, it squeaks. And I missed that important moment because I was adjusting the focus because I wasn't sure if I was in it. Now, do you want to know why I wasn't sure? It's because as this bird whacks this bug over the head to steal its property, oh, poor little spider. Oh, he'll never be the same. Is that even a spider? I doubt it. The peeking turns off after like half a second. I cannot for the life of me find in the menu system. I looked through the whole menu. There's a peeking section. There's no area where you can turn peeking to stay on. Even though you're in manual focus, Boom, I see it. As soon as you stop turning the ring, it disappears. And you're like, what the hell's going on? So you press record, you have something in focus, and then you're winging it. If it moves, you're screwed. I had this duck and it was moving. I was like, this is really annoying. I can't tell, I can nail initial focus and then I can't track anything. Whereas I could, if it was on, if you just have a static shot like this, okay, you'll get the shot. But if it moves and you want to track it, not like I could track a moth flying at me. I don't throw the term deal breaker in very often. I'm not like super dramatic here. I'm just saying that's a deal breaker for me. The peaking disappears, like what the hell? And that's in the OM-1 too. It should be able to stay on if I want it to. How the hell, like Fuji X-H2S, that 240 frames per second being so terrible, that's a deal breaker. Those are two deal breakers. Most other systems, there's no deal breakers. Sony's a little heavy. It's not a breaking my deal here. I still carry it out there. Fuji has some jerky Ibis. Doesn't break my back deal. Here's an epic battle, Bumblebee. See that jumpy focus? Ah, get out of here. Ah, leave me alone, this is my flower. Get your own flower. And he did. He did. No, he didn't. He came back to kill him. He came back for blood. No, he didn't. They're sharing. Oh, that's beautiful. They share the flower. You can get along. Here's a butterfly. I've never seen a butterfly with like his wing ripped off by a bird or something. I've always wondered that because they're so fragile looking. It's like, how come I never see them like ripped in half? Well, there's one. He's surviving. He's doing fine. What's your excuse? You're tired, grow up. And then it happened. I saw it, I was ready for it. I pressed record, we got some. Hummingbird action in 120 frames per second. They are just hovering. They just hover there. Oh man, they're so cool. That's, I saw one last week, but he flew off. It was too fast and this was perfect. We got so many different little shots of him. I was, the problem with this was that peaking turns off. So it's like, okay, I got him. And then I'm like, is he still in focus? He's moving to the next flower. I'm like, was that in the right focal plane? So a lot of the focus jumps are noticeable. You couldn't sell the footage, but it was fairly magical. Even though my shutter speed was nowhere near proper. It just looks like he has two wings. That's fine. I don't mind it. It's interesting, they suck the flower. You can see it sucking back and forth. He's like, oh, how about this one? There's nothing in here. Come on, mom. 
This flower sucks. Open up. Give me your juice. Give me your nectar juice. Come on, I'm designed for you. We're designed to share. Give me your liquid. You're not ready yet? Get, I want it. I'm not leaving to another one. This is the best one. So not bad. I mean, it would have looked much better on the Fuji or the Sony, I guarantee it, but we got the shot. It's my best hummingbird shot ever. I've only had one other one that wasn't even in the shot, so it's not much to compare to, but we did good. We did good. And then this other hummingbird, I think, came in and scared him off. But I was not able to follow them, so we don't know what happened. They probably made love. That's what I imagine. So up to this point, I must say, it was a pleasure to use, except for a couple of those quirks with the peaking disappearing, so that was a huge frustration. But like, having the Prime without the zoom, I was wondering if that was gonna be a big problem. I don't think it was. I was able to find the shot, and when this is out, you just, to help, you line it up with the lens hood. You just point that hood at something, and then you look, and it should be in your shot, roughly. So I was finding things pretty good, manual focus was easy, pressing record and then just hoping it didn't move. But you hope it does move to be interesting and then I found it was pretty deal breaker. But if they could just update the peaking to stay on and somehow this manual focus to be smoother, I didn't try unclutched because it still does it. So it might be better like that making the clutch feature useless, like most of Olympus' features. And then it happened again, something even better. The best shot of the night. It was daytime. I see this night hair on. I'm like, okay, 4K 24P, shall we? Let's see what that looks like. Not bad, stay, but I've seen better. I think I was leaning on a railing at this point. I was like, handheld kind of sucks. Even leaning on a railing is not the best. He didn't do anything. Then, Almost the most disappointing moment of my life. I'm kneeling, it's awkward, I'm balanced on a railing, I'm like, this sucks. I'm gonna sit down on this, it's like a bridge. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna adjust my position here, switch over to 120 frames per second. Night Heron catches a fish. I'm like, and everybody's like, oh, that's awesome, did you get it? I'm like, no. Oh, man. And I've watched these patient sons of guns they stay there forever and they never catch anything ever and it takes hours and i'm like he just caught one that will be years before he gets another but thankfully immediately after he caught another even bigger more glorious fish i couldn't believe what i witnessed he starts off by singing he's like hey come here fish i got some food Ow. and he grabbed this giant just spiky looking fish. I don't know what that is, a piranha, probably. And he's like wiggling off the seaweed and I'm like, oh my God, I'm in manual focus. I can't tell if the peaking is working anymore. So I'm like, should I adjust it? No, don't, oh, oh God, what am I doing? I did adjust it way too hard. And then we got it, we got it back. And he's, this is interesting. So he, he starts swallowing it head first he blinks every time he makes that swallowing motion. This is why I love slow-mo. You get to see all these little minute details. And then the fish literally swims into his stomach acid cavity. I think he wiggles one more time. Oh, uh, oh what is this? Oh, uh, that's not a lake. A lake of death. And he shugs off the seaweed and spits it out. He's like, I don't like plants. I'm a carnivore. I'm not a vegan. Loser vegans. Now I'm sustained. I am sustained for hours. He was actually continuing to fish after this. It's like, how much could you possibly eat? That was a giant bunch of freak fish. So even though I didn't have the best equipment, so even though I didn't have the... Oh my God, my mic wasn't even plugged in. The light was on. I don't know if it was working, I doubt it. Sorry for the terrible audio so far, but my goodness. So I was gonna say, even though I might not have had the best equipment and the footage didn't look the best, we got interesting moments and that's what matters. 
So don't tell yourself, oh, I need full frame. This is no good. It is good. Just go get something and then worry that it's not good enough and it isn't. And then eventually you'll get more when you sell your stuff. I saw this little bird. He was diving to the lake. I was trying to track it. He was like flying and catching things at the lake. I couldn't do it though. I really sucked. I really sucked at that. It wasn't Olympus's fault. It's just the speed of it and then trying to keep it in the frame. Okay, there he goes. All right, we can do this. We can just track it. Oh, no, I overshot it. It's either I undershoot or overshoot. It's impossible. I hate birds. I saw this very unique looking fly, the freaking zebra fly or something. Zebra bull fly. Those are unique. Never seen that before. And this is as close as Olympus can get. And I found it was like almost macro technology. That's what we're with. Oh God. Oh, what is, oh, what is that? Oh, why did I keep filming that? Oh, that was disgusting. Oh, you're an asshole. So I think I was right in my early assessments that Olympus is not that great for video. And y'all said it was because of my lens. And I, no, I said it would be maybe slightly sharper, a little more tonic, and that's what it is. It's exactly what it is. It's not so much more stable with the sync stabe. Sometimes even worse, I think. I don't know, man. Like I wouldn't personally buy into Olympus for wildlife just for that peaking issue. That's really annoying. But having the Prime was nice and it makes me curious about the GH6 with the Leica 200 and the teleconverter. We're looking at 280 24 with the teleconverter similar I could deal with that and much better codex designed for video 4k 120p HD 300 I think it'll look like trash but maybe that like a lens could squeeze some juice out of it maybe yeah not bad thank you camera Canada for lending it to me now I see that it is not really my cup of tea just Olympus it's their fault if they had a body that they knew what they were doing video centric then this would be your lens probably i really liked it if the unclutch is smoother and better i highly doubt it is i could just test it right now why didn't i do that you do have to take the lens cap off apparently for that okay let's see what we're going for it's not working at all we're in continuous autofocus. That could be why. Don't don't blame the user error on that one. That's it's a common mistake. Very common, actually. Okay. Wrong way on that one. Okay. So it's there. Hmm. It is less sensitive and better. It's much better. Like much better. Wow. You know what? Peking has a button that I used to press. Is that it? Peaking appears to stay on if you just press that button. So a lot of a lot of the deal breaking flaws are just me being an absolute idiot. That's the only deal breaker in my brain. So still it's annoying that I have to press a button. That could hurt over time the joints. You want knuckle issues? by Olympus. That light looks so stupid. I'm gonna leave. Thank you for buying the lens and gear through my affiliate. It's good enough for you, not for me. I'm high-end here. I'll go after you buy a Fuji Assassin t-shirt. I have no Olympus shirt. I need like a character. My only thought was like a man standing at an unemployment line. The Olympus loser of some sort would you buy it you, you wouldn't